Hi everyone, I will be talking through the topic of composite functions. So composite functions falls under maths methods in unit three, area of study two, algebra of functions. By the end of this video, I'm hoping you will be able to identify and interpret composite functions, as well as generate the function and graph the new function contained in the new domain and range. So that includes learning um, how to generate the domain and range for the new composite function. In a nutshell, a composite function is one function, one equation, contained in another equation. So you will be given two equations and the new function, which is the composite function, will adopt the constraints of the equation put on the inside. So although the theory is quite short, it is a little bit confusing. You're usually given two functions, usually f of x and g of x, and you're asked to find f of g of x, otherwise known as fog. Essentially, the equation g of x takes the place of any x in f of x. Where it gets tricky is the range of g of x must be contained in the domain of f of x for the function fog to exist. It can also be worded in terms of GOF, and this is g of f of x. So it's just the other way around. f of x will be contained in g of x. The best way to solidify this theory is learning with an example. So here we are provided with two equations, f of x and g of x. f of x being 2x minus 1 and g of x being 3x squared. I hope you guys are familiar with the domain notation here, r into r. If you're not, please touch up on this before continuing with this example. So the question is to find fog and the respective domain and range. So here we need to find f of g of x. And as you can see, I've replaced any x in the equation of f of x with the equation g of x. So simply put in this equation, I've popped 3x squared wherever we see an x in the f of x equation. This turns out to be 2 times 3x squared minus 1. And we can see that that simplifies down to 6x squared minus 1. Remember, for f of g of x to exist, the range of g of x must be contained in the domain of f of x. So what does that actually mean? Here's my tip. So think of g of x as a y, and y has a range. g of x, the equation, is replacing any x in the equation of f of x. And f of x already has a set domain. So the y value of g of x must fit into the x values of f of x. The range of g of x must be contained in the domain of f of x. That's how it would be worded in a problem, and that little symbol there means contained. So recall our two equations, f of x and g of x, and our composite function. So what is the range of g of x? We need to make sure that this fits in the domain of f of x. What do these functions look like? Graphing these functions really helps to visualise what these functions look like and helps prove it to not only you, but also your marker. So here we have f of x, 2x minus 1, a pretty easy equation to graph, just a simple linear line. And we know that the domain is all real numbers and the range is also all real numbers. For g of x, we have this graph here, which is 3x squared. And we know that the domain is all real numbers, but we can see from the graph that the range is zero to infinity. Zero being included, infinity not being included. Does the range of g of x fit into the domain of f of x? So we can test that out with a little table. This table is very helpful and just helps to clear things up, solidify and confirm things for both yourself again and your marker. So we can see here that the range of g of x is contained in the domain of f of x as 0 to infinity 
is included in all real numbers. So before we finish up with this example, we do have to define frog or our new composite function f of g of x. And it does exist, which is good. So now we have this equation. But what is the domain and range of f of g of x? Recall that the y values of g of x replace it the, the x values of f of x. If we sub in the g of x range into f of g of x, we can find the new domain and respective range. So the range of g of x is 0 to infinity. If we sub in the 0 into our composite function, we find that f of g of 0 is equal to negative 1. If we sub in infinity, we find that f of g of infinity is equal to infinity. Obviously, negative 1 doesn't mean much when it comes to infinity, so we can say that this just results in infinity. So our new domain of f of g of x is negative 1 to infinity. Another example for you guys, hopefully this helps to clear things up. So we are provided with our two equations, f of x and g of x, and we're asked to find frog and goff. So step one, graph each function to find the domain and the range. This helps clear things up and helps with visualization to make sure that you are getting things right as well. So here is our f of x function, x squared minus four. We can see that the domain is all real numbers and then the range is negative four to infinity obviously because we're not going to get that graph to fall below negative 4. For our g of x, obviously we can't square root any negative numbers, so all x values must be positive. And it is inclusive of 0 because square root of 0 is 0. And the range just happen, happens to be the same as the domain for this one, so it is 0 to infinity as well. So step 2 is to check if fog and goff actually exist. Notice that I've got the same table as before, except for g of f of x. I've swapped around the f of x and g of x, because this time we have g of f of x. So f of x is contained in g of x, hence the range of f of x should be contained, or needs to be contained, in the domain of g of x. So for fog, back to the left, we know that 0 to infinity does fit within all real numbers, so fog does exist. Unfortunately for Goff, it does not exist because negative 4 to infinity is not contained within 0 to infinity. So step 3 is to solve for fog. As Goff doesn't exist, we can't solve for it. It hasn't met those requirements that the range of f of x must be contained in the domain of g of x. So solving for fog, we replace any x value in f of x with the equation that is g of x. So we can see here that we have replaced x squared with square root of x, and we can see that that simplifies down to x minus 4. So our new composite equation is f of g of x equals x minus 4. Step four is to define the composite function with the new relative domain. So recall that the y values of g of x replace the x values of f of x. So if we sub in the g values, the g range values into f of g of x, we can find the new domain, the new x values that exist and respective range for the composite function. So our range of g of x is zero to infinity if we sub in 0 into our composite function, we get f of g of 0 equals 0 minus negative 4, sorry, minus 4, which equals negative 4. If we sub in infinity, we get f of g of infinity is equal to infinity minus 4. Like the previous example, negative 4 doesn't really mean much when it comes to infinity, so we say our upper limit is infinity. Lastly, we do need to actually define the function. It's not good enough to just leave your working like this. You do have to fully explain what you've done, showing your method, hence math methods, and then present your answer. So our final answer would be f of g of x, include the domain, which is negative four to infinity. It's inclusive of negative four. Obviously, we're never gonna to get to infinity, so it's round bracket for infinity. 
in the domain of R. And then our equation. So our composite function finally is f of g of x equals x minus 4. My final tip for you guys is to definitely try a Goff example. So this would look like a g of f of x example. This problem would require the range of f of x to be contained in the domain of g of x rather than the other way around. Upon that, try a more challenging problem. Go to those harder questions in your textbooks in the practice exams, practice sacks. Try them out because that will really test your understanding further and build upon your problem solving skills. That leads into what you've probably heard many times before, but practice does make perfect. And as cheesy as it is for a subject like this, the practice does actually show off and it becomes a problem of understanding rather than a problem of memorization. Finally, make use of your teachers, make use of your friends and your tutors and family as well. Chances are they've been in a similar situation and they actually really want to see you succeed. I know teachers and tutors put in just as much effort as students do and they want to help and they want to be there for you. So just reach out. It isn't the scariest thing and it will definitely pay off. So good luck for the rest of the year, guys, and thanks for watching.